To kick off this conference, please put your hands together for our HICSA conference chair, none other than Mr. Manav Thadani, founder chairman for Deloitte. I certainly didn't rehearse this. I didn't know how tired I would be here, but uh, let me catch my breath. <laughs> uh, good morning, everyone. <laughs> uh, welcome to the uh, 19th edition of HICSA. Welcome back to Bangalore. It's great to have all of you here, right? If you remember my speech from last year, we had this mouse, and the mouse was dying. And then, as the years went back, or as the months went back, the mouse started exercising more, playing to the tunes of Rocky Balboa, and was strong and healthy. And we predicted a very, very strong year ahead. And we've all had a great year, right? Every spectrum, hotels, consultants, conferencing business, FNB, everything has done really well. But I tell people, when in India or when in South Asia, this can happen to you. So don't get too excited. You don't know where that broomstick is coming from. You don't know what might happen. Enjoy the moment. We at Hotel Evit feel that 2024 will be a good year. We think 25 will be a good year. We hope 26 will be a good year, right? And that's all we can hope for. But along the way, things can do go wrong. I'm going to leave my next speaker, Jesper, to talk about market conditions and so forth. But uh, I'm going to focus more on my presentation, more uncensored stuff here. So um, yesterday, we had a wonderful uh, reception hosted. And I just want to play a quick uh, recap of yesterday, if I can.
Thank you, and thank you for being there, for those of you who are there. Um, great evening. Uh, I know the video didn't capture it, but we were a packed house. If any of you were there, there was no standing space at a, at a particular point of time. Uh, great golfing outing for the 30-plus golfers who were there with us, so thank you for that. Um, we, uh, you know, I just want to go back and, you know, talk about this year, the focus is on FNB. Uh, we have two full action-packed days ahead of us, and I'm hoping that even the other sessions that we have will capture that FNB stuff that we're doing, right? It's such an important part of our business, and I think we come to these conferences year after year, we don't really talk about it. And for many people, it's a big chunk of their business, and I thought we'd put some spotlight on that. Uh, this evening, we have the culinary carnival, something that we have never attempted. Been a bit of a logistical uh, challenge, but hopefully it will all pay off. We have eight wonderful pop-ups from across India. Some brands that you are familiar with, some uh, restaurant that you may have eaten it. And I just want to thank everyone who has helped put this together and uh, work with us to make this evening. So this evening is going to be really special. It's at the poolside. Let me start with um, saying who is out here. So we have three global CEOs. Uh, we always end up, we're lucky and we're fortunate that these CEOs do come to our conference. Uh, we have three global CEOs from Radisson, Hyatt, and Accor. Uh, all three of them have made multiple trips to Hixa before, so we're very delighted to have them back with us. And you'll be seeing them over the next uh, two days. We have 115 odd speakers. Again, really appreciate all the speakers. Without you, uh, this will be a bland event, so I'm grateful and appreciative of your being out here. And then, of course, my sponsors, right? Without the sponsors, we have a lot of them this year, so thank you so much. Uh, can't name everyone, but, you know, GRT, Sterling, Green Park, uh, these are hotel companies in the south, uh, so to having you here again, it's great. Uh, then, of course, our regular, right? ITC, Taj, Priya sitting here, Park, Sarovar. Um, and then, of course, Samsung and Hovel, and I, I don't want to go on, but I'm just saying we're really grateful for all the support uh, that you've given. Please stop by and say hello to some of them. This um, afternoon at 5 o'clock, we're shutting down the voting for the Hotel of the Year Awards. Please download the app. Please vote. We went through an extensive jury process to shortlist the best three hotels in each category. Uh, take some time out, look at them, go to their website, see which ones you want to vote for, and do put up the votes for the six different categories that we have. You could download the app. I know Trisha spoke about it. Uh, but you could not only download the app, you could set up meetings, you know who's out here. Um, and you can rate my session or any other session. If you don't like it, give me a one star. If you like me, put a five star. If you like my dance, give me ten stars. No, I'm just kidding. Um, and then, you know, I wanted to share this number, right? This is, a, this is something that we didn't expect this, right? I mean, we moved to Bangalore. Maybe it coincided with the markets being very strong. Uh, but to have 725, and I don't know what the final numbers are, but to have 725 people out here is really, really uh, remarkable. Broken up into our male, female, one always hopes that we'll get more people from uh, all sides. Uh, domestic, international, uh, again, the number has changed, it's gone down in percentage term because we have that many more people from India. India is one of the few places around the globe right now that is booming. Obviously, this shows most of you are here. Uh, 18 countries represented. And then this slide. We, we give, as Hotel Evit, as organizers, we give this slide the most uh, visibility. For us, the hotel owners, uh, who are nearly 19%, are the most important group of people. We have around 140, 145 owners who are participating this year, or asset managers. 
Um, so for us, that's the most important thing. This year, we opened it up to GMs. Uh, so yes, uh, hotel operation, we have around 100, 120, 130 GMs who are participating. And you know, these are our leaders of the future, right? 20 years ago, most of the people who are sitting in the front row were not even GM, but today they're leaders, they're CEOs. So if we don't start encouraging them to come to these events from an early time, we won't, you know, maybe when I'm retired, they'll be sitting in the front row and, you know, whatever. <laughs> so this was interesting. Owners only workshop, and I'm just wanting to clarify, these are not my points. I was not participating at the owners meet. I was just um, an observer. These were 10 points that were brought up. Do I agree with all of them? Perhaps, perhaps not. Uh, some of them are controversial, starting with the first one. How do you create a hotel owners association, right? Yeah, everyone was gung-ho about it and so forth. There's a slight problem to that, and I didn't want to talk about it yesterday. What do you tell Taj, ITC, Leela, who also own hotels? Can they not be part of this? You know, so. These are a lot of thoughts to be given, but let me tell you, the sentiment was very strong, and we put down 20 points, and we asked people in the room to use stickers to point and put stickers get next to the ones that were most important to them. And the fact that that is right at the top also tells me the frustration that is there, and we have to get to the bottom of why that frustration is there. Uh, there was a lot of talk about brand standards and the rigidity of brand standards. And when it is convenient to the brand, the brand standards change because they want a flag out there. But the same brand standards don't apply to the same hotel in a Dubai or a Singapore or a, or a New York or Paris. So that was the point that was being made. System fees, IT fees, even something small as professional photography um, is driving owners crazy. Just because you're nominated by a Marriott or a Radisson or a Wyndham and say, use these photographers, doesn't mean that they charge exorbitant fees. So do something about that. These are small, perhaps easy to think solves. Incentive fee, this was a point that came up and I actually never thought of it. So, you know, people are saying we should not be giving incentive fee, which is, I think, wrong. But why not rationalize that to a certain level of performance, right? So someone said, Look at an owner's potential IRR at the cost of debt. Maybe in India that will be 26, 27%. And say, if you're not giving 25% bottom line, we'll take zero incentive fee. It's a midway point. You can reward yourself if you do a much better job. I'm just thinking these are points that were talked about. Brand standards, not market appropriate. This is something, if there had been a technical services person in that room yesterday, I don't know. They may have been lynched. Operator technical services should be quantifiable and not just lip service. And I'm seeing this, guys. We manage contracts. You guys want your $100,000, $200,000, then provide us support from owner's point of view for that kind of money that you're charging. And they need to have centralized FNB. Why can't that be done? Again, a point to think about. The need to outsourcing restaurants and bars. FNB profitability again came up as an area of concern, and that's why we're having this conference based on that. And then, of course, diverting investment from operator fees to talent. I know it's not going to happen. Talent is a big challenge. But yes, people are saying, why can't we uh, operate? So I just wanted to put some focus on this. We at Hotel Evate will delve into all the points, maybe come up with a white paper and put it out there. Again, Reiterating, these are not my points, these are not hotel evade points, these are the owners, the 130 owners who were there yesterday. I don't now want to talk about a little bit about the food for thought, right? Again, if you have your app open, can you please start voting to see, you know what, and this is live, right? So if some of you are voting, you will see it, but Clearly, what this is showing that, you know, restaurants run by hotel brands are really hurting. I mean, you take a few hotels, right? A Dampo or a Bukhara or someone, you know, some of the hotels, and we'll talk about some of them. They're doing a good job and they will always be there. But a large number of them, I would say 95% or more of them, 
They just don't know how to run a restaurant. And I'll tell you why. Uh, so this will keep playing, and you know, we can leave it there. But uh, I just, you know, we'll talk about it other FNB sessions. We can have it pulled up by my team again when the FNB sessions are on. Um, but look, for many hotels, when you talk to them and when you go to that budgeting exercise, they'll tell you 30, 40, 50, 60 percent of my revenues are coming from FNB. And that's what the focus is on. But the problem with that generalization of FNB revenue is that a large part of that for them is banqueting wedding. Many beef shadi kari hai, many 80,000, 80, you know, 80 weddings I've done. This is what I'm doing. I have the biggest ballroom. This is what I'm doing. The problem is, I was talking to some of the GMs, right? You have, let's say, a hotel, luxury hotel that does 50% FNB and 50% rooms. Of that 50%, 50 to 60% can be restaurants or 50 to 60% can be banqueting, depending on where you are. So if you're a Fairmont Jaipur or a Leela Jaipur, of course it's banquet having. But if you're the Oberoi in Bangalore or if you're the Leela in Bangalore, where the banqueting is smaller, then of that 50%, 25% of your revenues is coming from FNB. Don't you think that 25% of your revenue needs to get focus? I blame myself for not highlighting this over the last 19 editions of Hixa, but I think that's the problem, right? And some brands have done a good job. Marriott, uh, uh, Taj, I'm sure there are a few more. They've branded their wedding business in the last three to five years. They're marketing it as such. But again, I've never seen a campaign like this for FNB. Tell me one brand in India saying that our coffee shops across 90 hotels, this is the brand, that's what we are, and come. Who has done that? Farzi Cafe does that for their hotels. McDonald's does it for their, hotel, uh, for their chains. But why aren't the hotels doing it? Instead, we're asked to, you know, we're not maximizing uh, restaurant revenue at all, right? A standalone, and my partner is here, I, I now own a restaurant. I know what it is to run an independent restaurant, apart from that landlord who's, you know, streaming down our uh, thing for various things which don't make any sense, but rent, utility bill, maintenance, I have to even look after my own security issue. I have to take care of my accounting payroll, I have to cash flows, talent. There are probably 50 things here that I don't have because I'm running an independent restaurant. But contrary to that, let's look at the restaurant FNB manager. Ah, I've done this many number of covers. This is my average check. And that's my top line. He's very happy with that. The GM is very happy. You'll show that to the owner. The owner is also fine, you know, met him. But please, take all your restaurants and add, a, let's say, 15% cost of rent. Add a 20 to 22% cost of labor, add a food cost to that, add a utility bill, add a maintenance thing, and let's then talk whether you're making money or not. And I can bet you more than 80% of the restaurants in hotels will not make money. So my basic question is why, and I know I'm pushing you, to go towards the way the Europe and the Americas have gone, but why are brands and the brand standards pushing us towards putting multiple restaurants? And if you want to have multiple restaurants because you have a large venue, then why aren't you outsourcing those restaurants? Why aren't you at the construction phase putting your restaurants in such a manner that they can be entered from the inside and on the outside and can be given to a third party to operate? These are simple solutions. Most of you are announcing 100 hotels, 50 hotels, then start doing something about it. Right? It's not happening. One more point, and I know this audience cannot help, but we can start talking about it. We need to put pressure on the government. Why is that GST in hotels has 18% for a restaurant and 5% for the independent restaurants? That 13% is killing us. So, we had talk about lower tax rates and so forth. Let's try and find the smaller battles, right? Let's talk about trying to 
um, get the GST right, and maybe that's the focus for the next 12 months to 15 months. And then GMs and operation heads need to start thinking of their units as independent PNL entities. If I was the asset manager of a hotel, I would tell my owner, let's look at the revenue streams and let's agree on what percentage of expenses that we can catch which an independent restaurant would have. And if that doesn't work, let's change the concept, let's give it out, let's do something else. Because don't forget, if you outsource it, that many people are going out of your payroll, that many people you have to take, less uh, people you have to take care of, and you're making life a lot simpler as a hotel operator. Focus on what you're good at, try and not to focus on things that you're not so good at. That's what I was talking about. But there are some restaurants also within hotels, and I'm sorry if I'm not, I've just picked up eight or nine slides, which I think they've done a good job, and some of them are recent favorites. I don't know if there's anyone here from Taj, right? And I'm picking one hotel of Taj. What they did with the Taj Man Singh when they won the bid, they completely reimagined, restructured, re-engineered. The House of Ming has been there for 40 plus years. It was a great brand, but in the last few years, had suffered. What did they do? You know, with Puneet and Suma and everyone else, they've kind of reimagined it. Today, once again, there's a waiting line to get in there on the weekends and even on weekdays. So there are opportunities. Brands do get it right, but you need to spread it out across all your chains. This one I'm a bit sad on because this used to be my favorite restaurant, Wasabi. Maybe it ran out of time. Maybe it didn't have the kind of clientele that I was looking for but they've converted it into an amazing uh, new uh, kind of wine kind of concept. Who has heard of ZLB23? Anyone in this room? Anyone? ZLB23? I can see one, two, three, four, five. I think this is one of the coolest things that have happened. This, this bar is maybe seven months old or six months old. It's at the Leela Bangalore, okay? It's on the second floor, tucked away at the back. It's in a service area. It was a storage room. So today, you find your way through the hotel. I'm not gonna talk about it because I want you to experience it. You go to an area which you think is the back of the house, you open it, you're suddenly in the plant and machinery room. You go up, you take a service lift, you go through a kitchen, there's a lift, service lift is being used by the same staff, and you open, a door opens, and you're in this bar. On the weekends, it's full. So you converted a storage area into a great bar, doing around, I, I've been told not to give the numbers, but doing well, right? Um, so things can be done if you have an innovative GM who wants to do something straight. So point I'm trying to make, think out of the box. If you, if you can't do it, get someone else to do it. Yankee, I don't know if Rohit is here, but one of my favorite restaurants in Bangkok, uh, there's so much excitement, there's so much buzz, there's, it's so experiential. I took my entire office, and when I say entire office, we did an office out, uh, out, off-site. Amazing place, amazing food, amazing the way they serve you the food. You can have, there are two big tables, you can have a competition between the two tables as to which table is drinking more. You know, that's what you need. Sorry. There we go. Uh, again in Bangkok, speak easy. This one used to be my favorite. It's become so popular that on the weekends, they have 1,800 people trying to get into a speak easy bar. And Rohit charges, I think, 500 baht per person, and he now runs the Bank of uh, Thailand as well, from what I've last heard, uh, and probably chartered a flight here. But anyway, um, again, great concept, simple. Um, yeah, it's Havana. So you go to the bathroom, and you have Cuban music swing, and you have Fidel Castro giving a speech. You know, hotels don't do these things, and why not? 
Levinwood Fire, Dubai, Michelin star, one star restaurant done by Atelier House. Again, one of my favorites. You know what? It's a nice restaurant. It's the type of cuisine that you're looking at. Everything is charred on a char grill. Again, different things. India had just opened last year when my conference happened. We just, uh, Panchali, my partner is here. Indian, Japanese, I won't call it fusion, a mix of two, doing well. We just got voted by Indie TV as one of the best new restaurants of India. Still new. But again, think something different. We're in a hotel, right? So that's one. And finally, if any of these stories have inspired you, and this is not a plug, but you know what? We have three FNB consultants from overseas. Talk to them, bring ideas from outside, and, you know, take it from there. Thank you. <laughs>